sure enough, got a good recommendation uh, from my partner in crime tonight uh, for our next speaker. Our next speaker is uh, Matt Schoenholtz, and he's the creative director for Frog Design. And here he is with his talk. Where are you? <laughs> here he is, sorry, with his talk from, inspira from perspiration, no, from inspiration to innovation, what happens in the middle? <laughs> Oh, lights. I live in the space between inspiration and innovation, designing things that don't yet exist, creating products that will disrupt a market, taking ideas from their infancy and developing them into something tangible, into something delightful, into something meaningful. After all, we innovate to improve the human condition. But inspiration and innovation are just two points each on the end of a spectrum, and what's not often talked about is what happens in the middle. Getting back to inspiration for a second, being immersed in a space like this is incredibly inspiring to me. I spent a s part of my sabbatical this last summer in Yosemite relaxing, reflecting on what I do. I did sabbatical things, I climbed some mountains, I grew a beard, and on one of those climbs I was talking to this amazing young woman and she asked me what I do. She was thinking about careers and she wanted to know how I spend my day. I told her, I don't know, I, I design things that don't exist. And she laughed. No, really, what do you do? The thing that you might not realize is that the woman in that photo was my 15-year-old daughter, Reagan. She was born years earlier than I had ever thought. Ever, ever planned to have kids. She was born at an age, an inflection point in my life, when I realized that there was something much larger than myself to focus on. I realized very, very quickly, I had to feed someone else besides myself. So I hung out my shingle and I started my first company. It took an incredible amount of commitment to balance school, work, trying to be a dad. In the moments of doubt, I realized I was doing this for her. She was my motivation, and she was my, my inspiration. And what I didn't realize, though, is, is that she would provide incredible in, uh, insight into how we learn and, and how we manage and how we foster innovation. What Reagan helped me realize then and now is that my role as a creative director and my role as a father are, are quite similar. I'm not saying that designers are kids. I'm saying that I've, I've learned something being a father that has been really relevant at work. Teaching and mentoring, distilling what I do from do intuitively to something that's teachable. Whether I'm working with my teams at work or teaching my children, my job is to, to, to shepherd their ideas, to create a safe space for those ideas to flourish and to empower them to achieve the things that they didn't think possible. So why is, this, uh, why is this relevant to innovation, you might ask? It's a topic of conversation, topic of Obama's recent speech. I presume it's uh, I don't know, a focus of many of you. But the thing is, we're going about it so poorly. It's every year we spend a trillion dollars, a trillion dollars on innovation globally. Yet 95% of those ideas Never make it to market. So I look around the room and there's a lot of incredibly smart people here and I'm sure you guys all have a lot of great ideas, but yet we're failing to hit market with 95% of all of our ideas. What can we do to be better shepherds to see ideas safely to market? Looking back at the last 15 years of my career, I realized that these elements were present for the successes the ones that made it to market and they were absent from the failures. So let's talk about how these five insights can help us get from in, uh, inspiration to innovation. We work in teams with our clients, guiding them through the process of creating products, taking those raw ideas and developing them into success and prosperity. 
And it starts with a lot of ideas, thousands of them. We surround our, ourselves with ideas every day. And I bet you if I asked any of you to take something of importance and how you'd like to see it redesigned, I bet you'd have, I don't know, 10 ideas for me almost immediately. But it's hard to identify the great ones, the ones with the most potential to, to cultivate into something meaningful, the ones that'll solve a problem, they'll solve the right problem. And I'm not saying that we can find the right idea. That's not my point. I don't think that we probably can find the right idea. But what we can do is we can find the idea that's right for us, that's right for you. And it's about passion. And it's about being passionate about the idea that we push forward because once we have passion, we'll push through with conviction. We'll see those ideas to market. And once we have that idea, it needs space to develop. It needs a safe environment, an environment of trust, an environment uh, of exploration, one where anything is possible. And we need to foster a, a safe environment. It's much like raising a child. We need to provide the space. It's collaborative. It's not averse to risk. And we need to, to, to empower our, our children, or empower our ideas in this space, but it's not a physical space. It's not a, a project room and a whiteboard. It's a culture. It's a mindset. And it's a, it, we need to, to be the champions to see those ideas through. But ideas take a lot of time to develop. Take the, the remote control, for example. I don't know, we've been working on it for about 50 years. <laughs> Started out with four buttons. That's all you could do. Channel up, channel down, volume. And well, now we can do a lot more things. And I can't say that we've made a lot of progress on making a simple device. And so sometimes it's about refinement. Sometimes it's about pushing through. And innovation is actually about simplification. That happens over time. It takes time to, re to nurture an idea, to, to refine it uh, as it matures. It takes time to get back to its essence. And rushing it's not going to happen, or rushing it's not going to, to get it to market faster. In fact, it, it actually might uh, take a little bit longer as we rush it because we'll ultimately trip. We're not looking at everything. And as that idea develops, we, you know, we learn. We learn through exploration. We learn through play. Uh, that's a, a topic tonight that's come up a couple of times. And the, you know, the power of play, we learn, you know, serious things through play. Many of you were flown here tonight by pilots who are trained on games. You know, I guess they call them flight simulators. Um, <laughs> I'd rather that they practice crashing there. Uh, it's in these simulations that we can try something new, an environment that embraces failure. And we can practice to perfect the task. Let's face it. Along the way, whether it's teaching a child to ride a bike or designing the bike, failure is going to happen. And we need to embrace and understand the value of failure so we can encourage our teams to learn from and push through those failures. We can be the champions of an iterative process that allows prototyping and simulation so we can learn from successes and failures. pretty common to be working on a product, be heads down, focused on what you're doing. You fail to realize that something has shifted. Something in the market has shifted. Consumer expectation, a technology, a competing product. I worked on this product four years ago, and it was really, really compelling in 2006. And it was released three years too late. The game was over. Fans had gone home. The stadium was empty. They took it off the market after 90 days. There's a lot of money that was sunk into a product like this. And it was because we didn't maintain a, a holistic awareness of what was going on in the market. And so, yeah, we need to stay focused on the idea. But there's also critical elements that we have to stay focused on. And, and, and beyond our focus, it's, it's the market. It's the readiness of our consumers. And it might seem strange that innovation and parenting are so closely related, but next time you think about birthing an idea, nurturing it to market success, pause. Think about your role as a parent. Think about your role as a child of a parent. And you realize that the lessons that we learn there can help us not only raise amazing young men and women, 
but also help us solve our innovation challenge. Because if we passionately push forward with the conviction that we need, with an idea that has meaning, we can not only reduce that 95%, but we can also solve our innovation challenge. Thank you. Thank you.